A few years ago, my daughter Catherine and I went on a mission trip to Uganda. Um, we were a part of a team of 11, and the missionaries we were going to visit had a lot of needs. They needed clothing for the children at the missionary-run school. They needed medical supplies. They needed lots of stuff. And so they asked us if we would bring stuff to them. as we could get away with and use all the rest of our luggage allowance to carry things for those missionaries. And we took like clothing for more than 75 children. I think we had like 60 pair of shoes. It was amazing, all the stuff that we took. It was also unbelievable how much luggage we had there were 22 large pieces of luggage plus 11 carry-ons that we had to keep with us. We needed a friend with a large pickup truck just to help us get to the airport. Um, going through baggage check-in was a nightmare. Um, we, when we collected our baggage at baggage claim, we had a ton of carts with a, piled high with luggage uh, and then going through customs was not fun. But we got the stuff with them that we needed, to them that we needed. But because we were carrying all that baggage, everything we had to do was a struggle because we were loaded down. For the past four weeks, Becky has been preaching a sermon series about summer baggage. She has talked about all the extra emotional baggage that we carry around. And just like my team heading to Uganda, carrying all that extra baggage is unwieldy. It weighs us down and keeps us from being our best. So we need to lighten our load. And she talked about the things that we need to get rid of. They were judgment, anger, bitterness, anxiety, fear, regret, and guilt. These are the things that hamper our ability to live the way God wants us to live. It's great to work on shedding these things because they weigh us down and make our life more difficult, just like traveling to Uganda with all of that luggage. When we carry all that excess baggage, it takes a toll on us. So I hope she talked about. I know that when my team, we were so thankful to be rid of all the extra stuff that we had with us. Um, it was a huge relief to get down to just our essentials. And we can feel just as much relief when we um, reduce our emotional baggage. But my question for you today is, what are our essentials? What is it that we must keep with us at all times and in all places? Well, there's just one thing that we always need to have wherever we are and whatever we do, okay? and that is love. Love is essential. In the passage I just read, Jesus said, love, of God and of others is the most important thing. So if love is the main thing, the most important thing, what does that look like? Well, first, as he said, we are to love God with all that we have, our heart, soul, mind, and strength. When we do that, that means that God is paramount in our lives, that God is the most important thing. And as Becky said to the children, that means that we spend time with God. 
We take time with God often to just talk to God in prayer, to listen to God, and to just be with God. As I've grown in my relationship with the Lord, I'm amazed at all the ways God makes God's self known. For instance, I feel very close to God in nature. For me, sunrises and sunsets are holy experiences. Uh, but we can interact with the divine anywhere and at any time. There are any number of things like a rainbow, a song on the radio, or a meme on Facebook that can remind us of God's love for us. As we develop a closeness to God, we notice God more and more, and our hearts are receptive to the prodding of the Holy Spirit. These gentle nudges and ideas that seem to arise out of nowhere are some of the ways the Holy Spirit works in us to transform us into loving, caring people, into our best selves. Being our best selves doesn't mean that we are perfect or extra special or anything like that. It just means that we are learning to live and love like Jesus. With the Holy Spirit working in us, we are able or we become able to act like Jesus, which means that we not only have love for God, but also for people. The Spirit enables us to love everyone with no exceptions and no exclusions. Jesus modeled this all-inclusive love for us. It's one of the reasons God became incarnate, to show us exactly what divine love looks like. And Jesus demonstrated for us how inclusive God's love is. He made a point to talk to, eat with, and heal people that his society thought were outside the bounds of God's love. For instance, he invited Matthew, the tax collector, to be one of his disciples, one of his closest followers. Now, you might not think that's such a big deal, but it was because tax collectors were despised. They worked for the Roman government, the occupying force in Israel. And the Roman government allowed tax collectors to collect as much money from the people they went to as they wanted to. They just needed to make sure that Rome got what they were due. So these tax collectors were shaking down people all the time. So Jesus spending time with Matthew and other tax collectors was a huge deal. Nobody wanted to. It's sort of like us hanging out with payday lenders. Another thing Jesus did was travel through the land of Samaria. He even had a long chat with a Samaritan woman at the well. This was a big deal because Jewish people saw the Samaritans as people of impure faith. And they didn't want to mix with them and risk having their faith corrupted. So when they were going from point A to point B, instead of taking the direct route through Samaria, they would go around Samaria so that they could avoid any contact with Samaritans. But Jesus went straight through the land. He stopped and talked to the people, and he even spent a couple of nights there. Now, that's sort of like us, not avoiding the rough sections of town, but driving straight through them, stopping and talking to the people, and then having dinner with them. Yet another thing did was talk to, touch, and heal people with leprosy. Leprosy is a horrible disease, and at the time it was thought to be extremely contagious and incurable. There was a huge stigma associated with having it. People with leprosy were shunned, 
And they weren't even allowed to live near anybody else. They had to live outside of town. And people were so scared of leprosy that when people who had that dread disease needed to come to town, they were supposed to cry out that they were walking through so that everyone could avoid them and not inadvertently touch them. So what did Jesus do? Jesus talked to them, and he even touched them in order to heal them. His actions were radical, just like the actions of the courageous and loving volunteers and friends who cared for AIDS patients back in the 70s and 80s when we didn't understand that disease and people shunned them as well. There are so many examples of Jesus defying expectations and destroying the boundaries that people had tried to place on God's love. By doing this, he was showing us that God's love is unlimited. It is far vaster than we can possibly imagine. And it's not our place to impose limits on it. Jesus' example shows us that no one is unworthy of God's love or our love. No one is too far gone, too sinful, or too different from us to be worthy of our love. We are to love and care for everyone, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, the political party you believe in, the sports team you pull for, the side of town you live in, or any of the number any of the number of other things that we use to try to create castes and categories of the worthy and the unworthy. As Jesus clearly showed us, these distinctions don't matter to God. God sees each and every one of us as a beloved child, and that's how we're supposed to see everybody also. God's love for us enables us to be aware of the emotional baggage that we carry, and it gives us the inclination and ability to work on shedding that baggage. As we become aware of and live into the love that God has for us, we feel more secure and have a greater, greater sense of self-worth because we know we are loved and there's nothing we can do to change God's love for us. That means that we can work on letting go of our judgment, our anger, our fear, and our regret. Thankfully, God's love, mercy, and grace help us shed all of this baggage. And without this baggage, we're free to travel light, taking just love with us. A couple of years ago, two really good friends of mine went to Europe for a two-week trip, same length of time as our trip to Uganda. And what they decided to do is they wanted to travel light. They wanted to be flexible and be able to do things at a moment's notice and not worry about um, checking bags or the always possibility of their bags getting lost. So they decided to take only carry-on luggage, and they wanted their carry-on luggage not to be just for airlines, but also fit the requirements for European trains, which are actually more restrictive than the airline requirements. So they packed only the essentials, the things that they could not do without for a two-week trip. And they did have the flexibility to change plans at a moment's notice and do whatever they wanted because their luggage was light. They were traveling light. And they found that on that trip, their essentials were enough. They didn't need anything else. God's love for us enables us to get rid of our emotional baggage and carry only the essentials, love. And we will find that that is 
enough. When we understand how much God loves us, we'll love in return. We'll find that this divine love so fills us up that we can't help but give it back to God and then pour it out on all those around us. Loving like this enables us to travel light. We have the freedom and flexibility to go and do whatever it is that God wants us to do. We are flexible and don't get bogged down trying to figure out if somebody is worthy of our love and help. We just love everyone and let God straighten it all out and take care of it. And that, my friends, is a great feeling and very freeing. I pray that we can all rid ourselves of our emotional baggage and keep with us the one essential, love. And then we can grow into our best selves, the people God created us to be. Thanks be to God.